What's up, my people? Welcome back to. I almost said a little chapter J. Welcome back to Ron. A cut more point. Welcome to my official WWE Payback 2016 preview slash predictions. Um, I'm going to be doing these predictions a little bit different from now on. The way I'm going to be doing these, I'm going to be doing them with interest rates. Um, not in terms of money, but what I mean by interest rates is my interest in the match or how much I care about a match or if I even care about a match at all. So that's how I'm going to do it. Out of five. Interest rates are out of five. One out of five, two out of five, three out of five. Four out of five, five out of five. One being, who the fuck cares? I don't care about the fucking match. I don't even want to see it. And just to get this out of the way, that match being the pre show match between Ryback and Callista, this is their fourth consecutive match. The first match that they had was a qualifying match, or it might have been the first round match. Not like I give a fuck. Uh, it, it, was, it was for the WWE Championship, you know, for the tournament, you know, for Survivor Series. You know, that was the first match that they had. The second match that they had was at WrestleMania on the pre-show. U.S. Championship. Nobody cared. Callisto won. Third match was on SmackDown. Last week's SmackDown. Right back one. Earned himself another title shot. Now this will be their fourth consecutive match. Still nobody gives a fuck. Now the only positive that comes out of this match is that John Cena is returning to the WWE on May 30th. So he's going to be back in time for Money in the Bank. Because Money in the Bank is the next pay-per-view after Extreme Rules. Extreme Rules uh, comes on May 22nd. So Ryback is going to win this match. Callisto is going to get his rematch. So that will be their fifth consecutive match at Extreme Rules. Which will most likely also be on the pre-show again. You know, they just cannot take Callisto off the pre-show. Do they not give a fuck about Callisto? And or Sin Cara? Damn. Or Hunikara? Because we all know this Hunikara. It's not the real Sin Cara. The real Sin Cara is in AAA now. I think he is. At least. But that would be their fifth and final consecutive match. Hopefully. Man, ain't nobody going to watch the pre-show. Nobody cares. Um, but about John Cena. Uh, Ryan Back is only going to be a transitional champion. Thank God. I'm not saying that because I read the dirt sheets. I didn't read the dirt sheets, but I just know he's going to be a transitional champion because Ryback is going to fail as a U.S. champion. You know what I'm saying? He failed as the U uh, as the uh, as the IC champion. Of course, he's going to fail as the U.S. champion. And besides, he's on my get off my TV list. He's boring. Nobody cares about this dude. I mean, what grown ass man chance feed me more? Every time he comes out, he gets no reaction whatsoever. The only people that chant feed me more are the kids. You know. And don't no grown ass man chant feed me more. That's some bitch made shit. But I'm not calling anybody a bitch. I'm just saying that nobody chants that shit. But unfortunately, John Cena is going to beat him for that championship. Hopefully, John Cena brings back those United States Championship Open challenges because those actually brought prestige to the title. As much as I hate John Cena, not the man, but the character. He brought prestige to the title and made me care about the championship. Right now, I could give two shits about that championship. Same with the IC championship. And we're going to get to that in a second. But as for the rest of the rates, two is meh. I don't really care about the feud, but it'll be a decent match nonetheless. As long as it's a decent match, I ain't going to complain. Uh, three is I'm interested in the field, but I'm not interested at the same time. If you understand what I'm saying, if you don't understand what I'm saying, what that means is I'm interested in the field, but based on the storytelling, like if it if the the field sucks, like not the field, but the if the storytelling sucks, and you know like they don't progress the field enough to the point where I do want to care. Or to the point where I don't care, then I'm interested in the field, but then again, I'm not interested because of how bad storytelling was, basically, or how bad the build up was. Uh, in this case, that would be the IC Championship, but I'll get to that in a second. Four being, I'm really interested in the field, but it shouldn't drag on too long. So, what that means is, like, Say the Usos versus the Dudleys, for example. Like I was interested in this feud at first because the Dudleys had turned heel. And I thought they were going to do something. But then it just dragged on and then nobody cared. The Dudleys get no reaction when it comes out. Uh, Usos don't get any reactions when they come out. Like This is just one boring ass feud that nobody gave a fuck about. 
And then number five, I'm really interested in the feud, and I can't wait to see what happens next. I'm all for it as long as WWE doesn't fuck it up like they always do. You know, like Roman Reigns versus AJ Styles. I hope they don't fuck this up. I know there's a swerve in the works. You know, hopefully they surprise us and not give us anything stupid. Like they promised us a swerve for WrestleMania. Did we get one? Fuck no. We didn't get shit. You know what I'm saying? That was supposed to be a swerve for uh, Shane McMahon versus Undertaker. Did we get one? Hell no. We're supposed to get a debut. We didn't get one. We're supposed to get a return. We didn't get one. That was supposed to be a swerve for uh, Roman Reigns versus Triple H. Did we get one? No. They did the match exactly how we thought it went in. Roman Reigns beating Triple H with a weak ass spear. One, two, three. Holding the championship. See a booze. Everybody's going home pissed off. Now for the main card. Now I put all these in the order that I think that they're going to happen. Odds are this might happen. And if I do get this order right. I might start joining Russell Rumble. I don't have any money to do that shit right now. But when I get the money, bro, I'm going to win some for real. I, I mean, Russell Rumble seems fun as hell. and I kind of want to join that shit, man. Uh, but we got the IC Championship match to open up the show. Miz versus Cesaro. Ballers, the shit run. Dean Ambrose versus Jericho to happen right after this match. Baron Corbin versus Dolph Ziggler. Happening after that match, you know, these matches could go before or after one another. It doesn't matter. Um, those are the two matches that I'm disinterested in, to be honest. Uh, the Women's Championship match, Charlotte versus Natalya. I'm going to say Charlotte versus Ric Flair because <laughs> I got Ric Flair right here, too. But Charlotte versus Natalya with Ric Flair in her corner, uh, Ric Flair in Charlotte's corner, and Bret Hart in Natalya's corner. Uh Finals of the Tag Team Championships number one contender tournament. Bar Villains versus Enzo and Cass. Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens. And then the main event, Roman Reigns versus AJ Styles. That's the complete order that I think is going to happen. So, uh, unless they start up the show with the uh, number one contenders Tag Team Championship match. So, number one contenders to the Tag Team Championship match. No more contender match. No more contender tag match. That's what I'm going to say. No more contender tag match. Unless they start up the show with that. Which they probably will. But usually they always start the show with the with the IC Championship match. If they don't start with the IC Championship match. They always start with the Tag Team Championship match. Or some random ass tag match. You know. But seeing as that we don't have a Tag Team Championship match. Rather a number one contender tag match for the Tag Team Championships. They might as well start the show with the IC Championship. Start it off hot. You know what I'm saying? So let's get started. The IC Championship, Miz versus Cesaro. My prediction is Cesaro. We all know that Miz is going to be a transitional champion. His reign as IC Champion ain't going to work anymore. I mean, Maurice is only get him so far with this current gimmick. I mean, at first, I was disinterested in this Hollywood gimmick, but as soon as Maurice returned, I kind of got interested in it, and, you know, I, I've been entertained ever since she came back. You know what I'm saying? Like, the different takes and shit that he does, I like that, because it's fucking hilarious. But, it kind of blows my mind, not in that kind of way, you know what I'm trying to say, bars and shit rhyme. Uh, actually, no, let me say that differently. It kind of, like when he does the movie quotes, that's when I kind of drift away from the shit, you know, because I don't want to hear the shit. The movie quotes is what brings him down, basically. You know what I'm saying? And this is all being bad on the mic is another part of it, you know. If you're bad on the mic, I, yeah. I mean, he's not that bad on the mic. He's better than Roman Reigns, so I give him that, but still bad on the mic. He needs to work on that. Um, that's actually what Vince McMahon was talking about when he said he doesn't click with the fans. He does click with the fans. He's just not good on the mic. I mean, if you can push the great Kali, motherfucker, you can push Cesaro. Like I said, my prediction is Cesaro. My interest rate is a 3 out of 5. It was a 4 at first, but due to lack of storytelling, it is now a 3. And that's it. You know, the movie quotes kind of took it down a little bit, and it made me care less about the feud. But I'm still going to enjoy it. Next we got Dean Ambrose versus Chris Jericho. Oh, before I get to that, uh, there's one thing I almost forgot to say. 
Um, Cesaro winning the championship will be a good thing for the company. You know what I'm saying? Because that will give Apollo Crews a good feud to, you know, be in. Because Apollo Crews is definitely in need of a feud. He really needs a feud. These random ass squash matches with random ass jobbers, it's kind of getting tiresome and boring. I'm tired of seeing him in matches with Stardust and Salsa Outcast and shit. Put him in a feud. Right. Uh, but next we got Dean Ambrose versus Chris Jericho. Uh, my prediction is Ambrose. My interest rate, 2 out of 5. Uh, Jericho, right here I said, that Jericho is a narcissistic, egotistical asshole. Especially when he's a heel, but in a good way. Um, and it's a much needed win for Ambrose because he hasn't won on the pay-per-view since what? TLC 2015? Yeah, he needs a win. Next we have Baron Corbin versus Dolph Ziggler. My prediction is Baron Corbin. Also, two out of five. Um, could be a good showdown, but it's hella predictable. I mean, right now Dolph Ziggler is a jobber, and he ain't getting no push no time soon, unless he turns heel. But yeah, Baron Corbin is going to beat Dolph Ziggler. We already know it's like the most pre the most predictable match on the card. Every other match on this card is unpredictable, kind of. Uh, the next match is also predictable. The Women's Championship match, Charlotte with Ric Flair in the corner versus Natalya with Bret Hart in her corner. We all know that Natalya is going to lose, but she's going to put up a hell of a fight. I'm thinking this match is going to be on par with their NST TakeOver, the original NST TakeOver match. You know, that match was fucking awesome. I rewatched almost all the NST special events from NST Arrival all the way to NST TakeOver Brooklyn before watching NST TakeOver Dallas. You know, and each event was better than the last. But that's besides the point. The match that Charlotte and Natalia had at NST TakeOver, the first one, was one of the best women's matches that they've had on NXT before Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks and uh, Charlotte and Sasha Banks and Bailey you know you get what I'm saying it was before all the great shit happened but this match is going to be a great match as long as they get time I mean 11 minutes just give them 10-11 minutes and they could tear it up, for real. Uh, this is one of the co-main events. You know what I'm saying? My interest for this match, though, uh, my prediction is Charlotte, by the way. But my interest for this match, though, is a 4 out of 5. I'm looking forward to this match, but we all know that it's not going to last that long. Why? Because it's going to set up for something big. It's going to set up It's going to set up Charlotte versus Sasha Banks at SummerSlam. Now, before we get to Charlotte versus Sasha Banks, we got to go through Charlotte versus Becky Lynch. You got to get Becky Lynch in there somehow. And, you know, a good way to get Becky Lynch in there is to have her pin the champion on a random episode of Raw or SmackDown or both. And you can have them feud between, you know, Money in the Bank and Battleground. And you can let that roll on into SummerSlam with Sasha Banks and... Sasha Banks wins the title there. Singles match. Not a triple threat, but a singles match. Sasha Banks wins the title. Then we get Sasha Banks versus Charlotte rematch at Hell in Cell. And then a Survivor Series, you get Sasha Banks versus Becky Lynch. You know, I'm just thinking ahead of time, you know, as I go. <laughs> Next match, we got the finals for the Tag Team Championship No One Contenders Tournament between Vaught Villains and Enzo and Cass. Now, my prediction is the Vaughn Villains. A lot of people are predicting Enzo and Cass to win. But when you think about it, they're kind of in the middle of a feud between the Dudleys. So, I kind of respect the Dudleys to actually cost Enzo and Cass to match. Vaughn Villains win this match. That sets up Vaughn Villains versus the New Day at Extreme Rules. Because that's going to be a good match. Because you want Enzo and Cass versus the New Day at SummerSlam. You don't want that extreme rules. You damn sure don't want it at Money in the Bank or Battleground. You want to save that for you for SummerSlam. So yeah, my interest rate for that is a five. The next one is also five, as well as the main event. <laughs> These last three are a five. Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens. My prediction is Sami Zayn. I could change my prediction to Kevin Owens because that would further this feud. If Kevin Owens wins, 
you know, I watched um, the Lex Man's preview of Payback, and he said that if Zayn wins this match, that's pretty much the end of this feud. Um, I gotta agree. If he does win this match, that would be in the end of this feud. But then again, it wouldn't. You know, like this match, the way they end the match, it depends on how they end the match. If Sami Zayn wins by submission, then yeah, this feud is over. You tap out, the feud is over. But if he wins via roll up, you know, a surprise victory after a good 15 minutes, you know, if he misses the, the, uh, like, here's how they get in the match. Like, Sami Zayn, you know, be getting his ass whooped throughout the match, you know, get some offense in. But Kevin Owens is dominating. Like, they go back and forth throughout the whole entire match. They're both tired and shit. Finally, at the end of the match, you got Sami Zayn in one corner. You got Kevin Owens in another corner. Sami Zayn is riling up like Hulk Hogan and shit like he usually does. Goes for the Hulluva kick, but he misses. Kevin Owens goes for the super kick, connects. Picks him up, goes for the pop-up power bomb. And Sami Zayn reverses it into a Heron Karana and pins him 1-2-3, surprise victory. And that rolls up bars. <laughs> shit rhyme. And that rolls on to Money in the Bank where they could possibly end the feud, you know. Or, no, they could say that's a battleground. They could actually, you know, be in Money in the Bank match. They could be in the Money in the Bank match and they could have their final match together. Or against each other, rather, at Battleground. And that would be the end of that. I know some people want to wait until the SummerSlam to end this feud. But, I don't know. They could prolong it. Maybe you can have Kevin Owens win at Battleground and then have Sami Zayn finally overcome the odds and win at SummerSlam. That makes sense. But I would have Sami Zayn win here because he needs that win. But, uh, my description for my five is it's going to be a show stealer. Enough said. It is. This match is going to be fucking awesome. Uh, but finally, we got the main event. WWE World Heavyweight Championship. We got Roman Reigns. Excuse me, Roman Reigns <laughs> versus AJ Styles. Don't ask me why I said that shit. I, I've, I've been watching a little bit too much JD from NY, you know, off the script, bro. I mean, I, I, I read a lot of the comments on WWE's YouTube channel, and then I watch off the script, and JD's right. You always got that one Indian boy that swears up and down that Roman Reigns is his favorite wrestler, yet spells his fucking name wrong. Spells it Roman Reigns. Ramen, like the noodles. And then Reigns, R A I N S, like it's raining outside. Ramen Reigns. <laughs> I swear up and down that Roman Reigns is your favorite fucking wrestling. He's the greatest of all time. Hashtag GOAT. But he's. You he spell his name wrong and. Now look at you. <laughs> But this is going to be a great match. I gave this one a 5 because potential swerve in the works. We don't know what's going to happen with the Bullet Club. We don't know if Finn Balor's going to debut. Yeah, he's going to stay in NXT for like another month or so to continue to feud with Samoa Joe. Bars. Shit rhyme. Again, I've been rhyming since the beginning of this fucking uh, video. But this could also introduce Balor to the casual crowd who don't know who he is. You know what I'm saying? Have him be the leader of the Bullet Club. Because it doesn't make sense to add AJ Styles back to the Bullet Club. Like, are we really going to forget what they did in New Japan? Like, they beat the shit out of him in New Japan. Kicked him out of the Bullet Club. Carl Anderson and Luke Gandalf included. They whooping his ass too. And now they're going to welcome him back to the Bullet Club? That don't make no sense. They were already talking about what they did in New Japan. Why not counter off of it? Doesn't make sense if they don't. So Finn Balor would be the obvious choice. But if Roman Reigns wins, or when he wins, because we know AJ Styles ain't going to win. Um, but he's going to put up a hell of a fight. But if, they, uh, if Jericho, Jericho, damn, what the fuck am I saying? If Roman Reigns wins with the help of Gallows and Anderson, and he leaves the Bullet Club or the Roman Empire, then he's going to be a heel for sure. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure this is going to be setting up for a heel turn. There's so many possibilities, which is why I gave you the five. I don't know what's going to happen. It's so unpredictable. And I'm glad they didn't spoil it in the fucking dirt sheets like they usually do. You know what I'm saying? That that made this match ten times more watchable. You know what I'm saying? 
because we don't know what's going to happen. We want to know what's going to happen, but, man. Looking forward to that swear. With that being said, my overall show interest will be, which will be out of 10, I give it an 8 out of 10. I mean, three fives, one four, one three, and then two twos, and a one. Eight out of ten. The one being the pre-show, so the pre-show match don't count. But I see all the matches on the card being good matches. This is going to be a great show. I'm going to fucking enjoy it. And it's ten times better than WrestleMania. I'm going to go over the match card one more time. Just listen to this shit. With the exception of the pre-show match. Intercontinental Championship match. Miz versus Cesaro. It's going to be a decent match. Probably going to be about 10 minutes, 7 minutes. Dean Ambrose versus Chris Jericho. It's probably going to be about 8 to 10 minutes. I mean, it is a 3 hour show, so all these matches should get time. You know, so. Honestly, Championship, about 10 minutes. Dean Ambrose versus Jericho, about 10 minutes. Baron Corbin versus Dolph Ziggler, probably about 7 minutes tops. Women's Championship, going to be a great match. Going to be about 15 minutes, maybe. Tag Team Championship match, or Tag Team Championship number one contenders match. Probably be about 10 minutes, 11 minutes, 12 minutes. Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens, going to be about 20 minutes. Give them 20 minutes, they're going to tear the fucking house down. And then finally, Roman Reigns versus AJ Styles is going to be about a good 20 minutes. The first, first like 15 minutes, going to be top notch. And then the last five minutes is where the swerve happens, where Roman Reigns potentially turns heel. And then on Raw the next night, he explains his actions. Bro, this is going to be an awesome pay per view. That sounds 10 times better than WrestleMania 32. God damn, you look at the WrestleMania 32 card on paper, you're like, God damn, this is god awful. And then you watch the show, it exceeds your expectations of how awful the show would be. <laughs> like, God damn. You know what I'm saying? I cannot wait until Sunday. You know what I'm saying? I never thought I would say that for payback, but God damn, this is going to be a great show. As long as they don't fuck it up. Like they always do. Anyway, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, what do y'all think is going to happen at Payback? I want to know. Let uh, me you know in the comment section below. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up like a condom because I got a lot of editing to do today. Uh, I'm out, man. Peace. Fuck Donald Trump. Bye.